Welcome to another Star Citizen My Two Cents video by Nikki Backerl D'Angelo. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to improve the show floor at these events that CIG holds from time to time, my dismay about Deb saying they might not be doing any further update to the Constellation, and then I'll talk about improving your starter ship and taking on a few starter bounty hunting missions to try to diversify what you do in the verse when you first start playing. By this point, you've probably watched many videos that have showcased the show floor. It's been rather exciting for some, rather dull for others. And on this day, when they launched the Anvil show, I walked around and realized why my show is called Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous, where every show on this floor I own except for the Hawk. But there's a few things that are missing, and I'm going to say right up front, I don't expect CIG to do this now. I expect them to work on the game and get the game out. My suggestions are for down the road. The show floors are kind of dull and kind of without purpose. They're just a bunch of ships that are sitting around, and some of them aren't even placed well with the amazing F-8 in front of us having its wing clipping through the wall to its right or it's left if you're sitting in the cockpit. I'm not saying I'm disappointed about this, I'm not. I'm very happy and very grateful for them to show us all the different ships all at once. There are some things that changed over the week and I really liked what Aegis set up and they showed all the variants of the Avenger and all the variants of the Vanguard. I think that worked. And I hope they do that for future events like this. But I really think CIG, at some point, when they have the time, when they have the resources, should talk to an event planner and try to correct some of the deficiencies of just throwing things out like this. There's really no way to know exactly what the capabilities are of the ships that you're looking at, the lore behind them, what the best loadouts might be, or what's that wonderful battle or wonderful star system that was engaged by or discovered by these ships that they're putting out before us make it more exciting. Again, I don't expect that to happen now. I'd like for you to walk by different ships and have kind of an announcer, an MC, somebody describing that ship for you. Someone that you could go up to and use inner thought and ask some questions to. I think that would make this more exciting. But as, after you run through this area, it really doesn't have any re... Like, you don't want to go back through it. If you've been through one of these, going to them again is just going to see that one ship. Make it exciting. Talk about what these ships are doing in the verse today. And I hope that's something that they're able to do in the future. When time permits, when resources permits, and when we're actually playing more of the game, going to more star systems, and engaging in more professions. This next topic is quite bittersweet for me. I absolutely am in love with the exterior of this ship. Everything about it just screams at me that it's beautiful, and I need to own it. And I do, and I love to fly it. Yes, I know it drives like a Mack truck, and yes, I know you really need some kind of rear protection. Why is there not an auto turret in the back taking care of your rear end when you're being attacked? Well, instead of that, they gave us a ship that just does not fly right now, which in this case is the P-72 Archimedes. But there's just something about the ship here that works and a lot about it that doesn't work. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, Go to Morphologist's channel and look at what he says about this ship. There's a lot of cool things in it, but it's not exactly what I thought of as being a luxury ship. A luxury ship, when I envision this, I 
envisioned it being luxury stem to stern. I envisioned much better materials in the front, more area, a galley, and a bathroom for your passengers? Why do my passengers have to come to the front of the ship to go to the bathroom? And why is there absolutely nowhere to create any kind of meals for them right now? Not that it matters, but it does. Because they gave us a bathroom, they gave us food, and obviously they expect us to eat the food and then do what comes naturally. I have no idea what's coming down the pipe, and it really is kind of strange that we're talking about this. So when the devs nonchalantly mention that there's no top secret rework of the constellation currently in progress, and you could read that two ways. Either there's never going to be one, or there's just not one right now. And I understand that, because I want them to revisit it, but I want them to not do it right now because I want them to work on things that are more important. But there's so many things with the Connie that just make me shake my head when I go on it that I feel like it's in desperate need of one once they do have the time, once the resources permit. The stupid bars right in front. I, I don't know what they were thinking about putting those there. Maybe because a canopy that comes into a triangular piece distorts your view. So they wanted to give you a square piece in front of you you could look out of, no matter how thin and obstructed by the bars it was. Maybe they didn't care that those wonderful luxury people that you're going to be taking part in luxury transport gameplay need to walk from the back of the ship into the crew quarters and use a grimy, disgusting crew quarters bathroom. Now, I don't think mine will be that way, but that's one thing that they definitely did here. I know I'm, I'm nitpicking, and I know that I'm making more of this than I should, but many people have done the same. And I'm just a little bit disappointed that they aren't going to revisit it now, but actually understanding that the game has to be developed. We need other things in the game like well like exploration like the luxury transport gameplay like better cargo handling and i'm hoping 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 that those things are being worked on in lieu of this and that they could readdress it later i'm jumping out of my box running comfort zone and i'm going to make a solid attempt at explaining how to get started in bounty hunting in that starter ship but first, before you do anything, please go out there, make some box runs, and get up some cash. At least 135 to 175 k or you can do this little by little. This is one of the places to buy components for your ship. You can't buy all components for your ship in one place. Port Olisar does have many of them, so it is a good place to start. You'll find your components here, and I'm going to say it this way. In the world of a Chris Roberts game, the best of everything does not make the best build. Because if let's just say you take something like the best shield out there. It gives you great shielding, but when the shield comes down, it has a very, very slow recharge rate, leaving you vulnerable for a long period of time when your ship has to recharge those shields. So this is by no means the best loadout, but it's a loadout that I've selected. I went with the Spark missiles because cross-section missiles really don't have any way to spoof them right now. For systems, I went with the Ultra Flow and Zero Rush. You don't have to do this. I was fi following Subliminal's suggestion, and it seems to have worked. I used the Breton power plant, and I used the FR-66 shield generator. I would tell you before you even go out there, if you want to do this little by little, do the shield generator and the power plant first, because there is no real shield inside of the system. For weaponry, I went with four of the GT210s, but I'm going to try other loadouts. This seems to be what people are suggesting right now, but I'm going to say it this way. This is a Chris Roberts game, and as they start to work on shield technology and balanced weapons, you may need to start bringing with you a mixed loadout energy weapons to take down shields, mass drivers, gatling guns, ballistic repeaters, whatever it would be, to chew up hulls. I'm not going to tell you that's going to happen soon, but at some point that seems to happen in every one of Chris Roberts' games. 
So we are not going hunting for live human beings here. We are going to start with NPCs. And I'm going to show you how I go about this, and I am by far, I am by far no expert on this subject. But I have been doing some bounty hunting for the last few days, and it is kind of fun and a great thing to do in between different missions you take on. So jumping forward, you're going to find your missions in the Contract Manager and underneath Bounty Hunter. And I believe the live human ones are going to be under Personal. So we're going to try to get our assessment and some other things done, but that didn't go right for me today. So I'm just going to show you how to grab these missions. Then I'm going to jump ahead to the completion of one of these missions. So having moved out to Ariel, I'm making sure that I have two things done. A, I'm at the right beacon, and B, I have the right mission selected. If you're at a beacon but have the wrong mission selected, you're not going to see the NPC appear in front of you. This is kind of like doing a box run, and having the right mission selected and being in the right area is going to generate that NPC. Most of these missions are going to be very simple if you stick in the $1,500 and $2,000 bounty. And I'm telling you that from the perspective of you're in a ship that one errant shot can actually end your existence in the verse, which makes it kind of exciting. Even though we've upgraded the ship and we have a better power plant, better coolers, and much better shields, we're still very vulnerable in the Pisces. But it's very small, which makes it hard to hit. It's very nimble. It's just slow as molasses. Actually, it accelerates really fast, but it's not the fastest ship out there. It's faster than something like a Connie, but not faster than something like this Mustang over here. I am playing chicken with this Mustang, and it is very dangerous. Shields don't stop absolutely all damage that's going to be done to you. What shields do is they negate a partial amount of that damage, and some damage always leaks through. This Mustang is a Mustang Delta. It has dumb fire rockets, which do a ton of damage, and he's going to start lighting them off as I approach him. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that all my weapons are firing together. If you go to the weapons panel like I just showed and go to guns, you'll see zeros and ones in front of each one of the guns. In order to get them to fire concurrently from one trigger, just set them all to zero. That will be your primary. Here come all those wonderful rockets at me and look. He's already damaged me somewhat in my nose because I was trying to show you don't play chicken. Chicken with a Mustang in a Pisces, you're going to have a problem. Chicken with a Mustang with a ship that has two of these FR-66s, maybe not that bad. But anyway, we quickly collected the 2000 for this mission, but we forgot to do something. This one is important. Whenever you're out bounty hunting NPCs, always open up your contract manager, go into general and mercenary, and look for call to arms. This will net you a bonus for every one of the NPCs that you are able to kill. Without this, you're not going to make as much bounty hunting. With this, you'll even make money when you happen upon a fight that's going on between the UEC advocacy and some criminals in the local area. So remember, in order to maximize your payoff whenever doing these bounty hunter missions that are NPC based, always go and get that call to arms contract. Situational awareness and engagement assessment are two important skills to build when you're bounty hunting. In most situations, I would never take on a constellation by myself in this spacecraft. It is possible that I would wear it down and become victorious in this, but in this situation I have two NPCs that are also engaging this spacecraft, the Constellation, and its escort, so I don't have to worry so much. So I'm going to unleash the full power of my Pisces on this Constellation, and after a few minutes of emptying most of my rounds into it, 
Well, I'm going to let you just watch. When watching this next sequence, you have to take into account two things. My fighter pilot skills and the shields of this constellation. Now, I did say something in the beginning that the shields and the ability to take them down quickly were going to become more and more a part of this game as we go on. And this is a clear indication that I would need a weapon that could actually chew through these shields. So there is something going on here I'm not aware of right this very second as I'm trying to kill this constellation in 4X. First thing is, all the ballistic ammunition I'm using is going to cost me a boatload. And the next thing is, this wasn't my original target. This is just going to net me 500 for killing the two ships that were engaging these two NPCs. My target was actually 2,000 meters away, and I just had to fly those two kilometers to intercept him. Falling back to normal speed, I just want to point out a few things. I did make money on this bounty hunting run. I had four bounties I went out for. All of them, they, they netted between 1,500 and 2,500 apiece. And with the bonuses that I received from the call to arms, I netted just about 10,000 UEC. And that was after paying for fuel, repair, rearming, and hydrogen fuel. So those four things. I'm not disappointed with this. The way that I look at it is if you're just starting the game, you should find a way to do everything there is to do in the game currently. That's running cargo. That's doing box delivery missions, doing repair missions, maybe doing a couple of bunker missions if you can get a group together. I think the game offers a lot of different ways to make money. And bounty hunting will surely be much more profitable as the game goes on. But I still always will recommend running box deliveries to start off with. It could net you some very, very quick and easy cash without causing you to lose all of your money invested in any kind of trade or going all over the place looking for bounties and coming back with only 10k after an hour when you could have been getting 30, 60, 90,000 for an hour's worth of running boxes. Once you have that money, upgrade your ship any way you want. I give you one possibility for the Pisces. There are many. And then go out there and try your hand at other things. Enjoy the game. Do everything. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I want to thank you all for watching and coming back to join me as I rebuild Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. If you like this video, please click that thumbs up button below. If you are a subscriber, please click that notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. A huge thank you to all my patrons. If you want to join my patrons, go to patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Batgirl, and it will get you some benefits, I promise you. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.